So I'm going to be honest with you. Scarcity is ruining your life. And I'm not just talking about financial scarcity. I am talking about the way it's showing up everywhere in your relationships, in the content that you're making, in your approach to business, obviously in your approach to money. And I say this because it's something I've been working on for a really long time. And when, I, when I've thought about it over the last number of years, I've realized that it's actually something that's basically affects you since you're a child, right? And I, we have this idea that it only shows up in terms of money. And now it does. I had essentially a long... So at the beginning of the business that I've been running started as a Facebook advertiser. That was my first business that hit six figures. I also did video production, so I combined those together. That was my first agency where I'd actually like make content for people and also run their ads. I still do that today, but that was the first business that I was like, I need to make this work. I need to grow this and got to get to six figures and all that type of stuff, right? I thought that honestly, after I hit six figures, I'd be like flying private jets and stuff. I was not. Um, but then I had my first six figure month. I hit six figures in the bank. I told myself that that was going to be the cure to the scarcity, that feeling of not enough, that feeling of, you know, there aren't enough opportunities. There isn't enough money there. There, I'm not good enough. Any of those things. It helped kinda, but then what happened is I started to feel actually scared too. I started to have scarcity hit me in a totally different way, which was having money in the bank and then watching that number go down. And it was way harder than I thought it would be. Like going from $120,000 in the bank to like $99,000 in the bank was like scary to me because I felt like in my head, I may never get this money again. I may never have this opportunity again and nothing in life is good enough right now because I need to make sure that I maintain this level of success or financial stability or whatever right and that actually made it way worse I said, like my decision making went down my confidence went down my ability to deliver for clients went down everything was just going down and I have realized in that process even though good things were happening great things were happening I could have been way more positive about everything that was going on I realize now that that is scarcity inside your head and it is affecting everything it is the reasons why you don't leave the relationship that you want to leave it's the reason why you're not making the content you want to make and it's the reason why you are not doing the things that you need to do in order to keep going with your goals and your life if you do not have the goals that you want right now if you're not at that place where you're like yes i've done every single thing i've wanted to do behind that is your relationship with scarcity because for instance right now i'm in a big reach out phase doing reach outs and I know that that's something you have to do it's basically how I made sold my first million dollars it's how I bought the business of six figures it's it's how I've done everything right is through networking and through reach outs now I tell people that especially other people who are in the service industry or who you know like not the service restaurant industry but the service industry of uh like whether it's in SMMA or or you're just offering a service to businesses other businesses your b2b or even if you're a b2c company obviously you should do reach outs People don't want to do them. They tell me all the time, like, what do I say? The reason you don't want to do them is because of the scarcity. Because if you were to do them, the fear is that you, you know, people are going to say no. You're going to end up making a fool of yourself or something or saying the wrong thing or it's not going to work. That is inside of your head. And I'd even say that it comes down to the energy that we're experiencing too. Like, for instance, I was just talking to my wife and she was like, Oh, you know, the energy to do the work sometimes is a lot. And it's like, well, the reason that you don't have the energy is because underneath that, there's a part of your brain that's telling you it's not going to work. That's going to drain your energy, right? Like when you are sitting there and you're doing work and you on some level feel like it's not going to work or it's not going to yield the thing that you want, it is going to drain your energy. And there's other reasons, obviously, why your energy might be drained with what you're doing. But it is a big, big reason. So... 
here are some of the things that you can do to change your relationship with scarcity so that you can get into a more abundant place so that you can do the things that you know that you need to do and so that you can get to the places where you know ultimately you want to get. Now, again, this can apply to a lot of different things in life. I was even talking to, again, one of my friends. This is more of a relationship example, but he was in a relationship that was getting pretty bad and I kept on being like, dude, you should leave it. And he's like, oh, you know, I know I should, but I don't really want to. And I was like, do you feel like on some level you feel like there's no one else out there? You're not going to find anything like this again. He was like, no, I I don't feel that way. I think it's, and he gave me a bunch of other reasons. But here's the truth. (laughs) That's exactly why he didn't leave the relationship. Now they did break up. So that's, that's good. But there was a huge part of him that felt like on some level, if he were to leave the relationship, life wouldn't be as good. If he were to leave the relationship, he'd never find somebody else. If he were to leave the relationship, he would be sad and never be happy again, right? And that all ties in to the scarcity approach to life. When we don't feel like we have options, when we don't feel like we're capable of getting what we want, when we don't feel like you don't wake up and see the day as a huge opportunity. And trust me, I'm working on this too. It's all stemming from that, which means that you need to work on your perspective of abundance. So back to a couple of the things that you can do. One big one is meditation. Highly recommend doing meditation. You can do guided meditations. You can do visualizations, but basically you just sit there and you try to just let your thoughts just be. And the reason that this helps with abundance is because you realize that the thoughts in your head are not the be end and all truth of life. And it allows you to be present. And when you're present, you realize that you have everything you need in the given moment, literally. I don't know if you've ever read um, The Power of Now, but as someone who dealt with anxiety, it was something that really helped me. I read it before going into surgery and I was my, it was my first major thir- surgery, so I was a little bit nervous. And um, he has this line in it that's like, do you have everything you need right now? Like, is everything okay right now? That's what meditation allows you to do. It allows you to take a step back and it allows you to think for a second and be present and realize that no matter what's going on in your life, you probably have everything you need right now on some level, no matter what. Because you're alive and, and you, you, all you really need is the present moment. And the present moment is most of the time okay. And if it's not, you know it's not. And obviously then you're in a very specific, you know, fixing moment. But most of the time, we're either in a situation where we're thinking about the future or reflecting on the past. So meditation can help you feel a lot more abundant. The other thing that you can do is really deepen your relationship to gratitude. And by that I mean, Not just being grateful for what's happened in the past, but being grateful for what might happen in the future. There's a great journaling technique that I'm working on right now um, that I learned from another guy on YouTube, which was really helpful, where it's a mix between like scripting and just like future gratitude pacing. So in a scripting model, you know, you write down in a script format, okay, this is how my day goes or this is how my life goes. And then you add extra stuff. And in this gratitude method, you basically kind of do that, except you write down stuff that you're grateful for in the future. This is going to open up your field of expansion it's going to open up your ability to think in a more abundant way and and feel better because the reason that gratitude and abundance are connected is because when you're grateful you're in a state of abundance and you can't be in scarcity and abundance at the same time right so when you're grateful and you're feeling like good and by grateful i just mean yeah you're feeling good you're feeling happy you're feeling like there's possibility you're feeling like you know, like you have everything you need, you, you know, even when you don't maybe have everything you need, but you're, you're feeling overwhelmingly positive about what has gone on in your life or what is going on in your life. When you get into that place, it just opens up so much possibility for how, how you can feel. And that is going to help with the scarcity factor big time. And the last thing I'll say about the scarcity is you have to know how to recognize it. You have to know what it feels like. And of course, I've listed out a bunch of things about what it feels like, but what it feels like is it can, you know, at least for me, and I think for a lot of other people when I've talked to them and stuff, because obviously like, you know, I do the content coaching. I talk to people about their, you know, authentic voice. I talk to people about their storytelling and, 
and, and build their funnels and all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, usually when I'm working with someone, that scarcity is a big piece, as I said earlier in the video, about why they're not doing the things that they know they need to do and why they're afraid, including me sometimes, like to put stuff out there, why they're afraid to make changes or any of that stuff in their life, right? And so when you, when you know that, when you start to recognize what it feels like and you start to recognize that the thoughts that you're having, like think about it, are they related to feeling like you're not going to have enough, things won't change in the future, things can't get better? All of that needs to be addressed. I, I did this um, great program with this woman, uh, Catherine Zinkina, who's really awesome if you're into things like manifestation and just mindset and stuff, so I'd highly recommend checking her out. She's got this thing called the Limiting Belief Blaster. And you basically um, write down what the belief is. So you have a belief that comes to mind. Uh, for instance, saying something like, oh, I'll never be able to... Well, I'll give an example from my own life just for the vulnerability of this video. Um, like, I'd have thoughts like, uh, you know, I'm not as talented as this person, right? So you, you have this thought, like, or you have a feeling more, say. Let's say you, you feel down for a minute or you feel upset. Then you... Let me move this for a second. So you feel upset. You have to identify what the thought is that made you upset in the first place. So let's say you feel discouraged. You realize that the thought behind it is, I just feel like I'm never going to be as good as this other person. So then you write down all the reasons why you think that's true. So all the things that other people have told you, all the things you've experienced in your life, all of the other thoughts and feelings associated with that, you would write them down. Once you have all of that, you have to change the beliefs. And you do this by asking yourself a series of questions. Things like, is this true for everybody? Where did I learn this? How long have I felt this way? If, you know, would I, if someone else was dealing with this issue, what would I tell them? Um, did God tell you that this was 100% true and it will never change? Like, you have a series of questions that help you break out of this idea that, the, that these beliefs, because really, the scarcity feelings are built in beliefs, so you need to reshape those beliefs from the ground up. Once you have those things written down and you understand that these are just beliefs and stories that you're holding in your own head, you have to rewrite those stories. You have to tell yourself a new story about it, basically. So my example about the reach outs, because again, I tell people to do reach outs all the time and they're like, what do I say? So when that happens, you need to ask yourself like, what if I did reach outs and everything was perfect? What if I got all these clients? What if people loved hearing from me? What if I expanded my network you know, to meet some incredible people? What if I actually did become friends with these people? You know, sometimes you're looking at social media and you're like, oh, I could never be as good as those people. Why? You have to start asking yourself why you think that's true. Because only when you start asking yourself why you think that's true and realizing that it's just a story in your head that you, of why you don't think it's true, you will continue to let the scarcity ruin your life. And it will come up in really, really, really small ways. It'll come up because someone ate the last thing in the fridge and you'll be like, oh, why did they eat my dinner or whatever, right? Or someone will be, you'll be walking down the street and they'll be like, oh, that's a nice jacket. Why, what, where'd you get it? And you won't want to tell them because you're like, oh, if they have the jacket, then, you know, this jacket's mine, whatever. It comes in all of those ways and that stuff, it will ruin everything and ruin your relationships. It's going to ruin your friendships. It'll ruin your business. It's going to ruin your bank account. I say this from experience and, um, so I highly, highly suggest, and if you say, if you think for one second that you don't have a scarcity problem, very, very, very few people do. Not everyone has it show up in the same way. Like I know people that have literally done millions and millions and millions of dollars and their businesses are amazing and yet their relationships are awful, right? Yet they're, you know, divorced or they um, have a bad relationship with their siblings or uh, they can't hold down a friendship. So it will have these different areas in your life where it shows up, but trust me, it's there somewhere. And in the place where things are not working out the way you want, it's gonna be very likely a scarcity situation. So try these things in this video, hopefully they help. Feel free to leave me a comment anywhere because I'd love to know what you're working on right now in terms of where you are breaking your own scarcity patterns, and I will see you in another one.